Hello everyone, welcome back to the Geek Blend. I'm Jeff, and welcome back to one of the final videos during the 31 days of Halloween, my review for John Carpenter's Halloween, the 1978 classic. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire story. It's basically Michael kills his sister, uh, he gets locked away, he gets out, and he starts to stalk babysitters. He goes after Laurie Strode and her friends, and Donald Pleasance hunts him down in this movie, and it's really well done. Everything about this movie, in my opinion, is just fantastic. The cast is perfect. Jamie Lee Curtis does an amazing job in this role. This performance from Jamie Lee Curtis is probably my favorite that she's ever done. Probably in second place is going to be Halloween 2018. She does a really good job on that one as well. I will put those up above anything else she's ever done. Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. This character is one of my favorite characters in all of cinema. He's not cranked up to 11 with the crazy in this one yet. That comes in the later sequels. He's just the doctor who's scared, who's trying to get Michael back because he knows that all he is is just simply pure evil. And once he got out, he knew where he was going and what he was going to be doing. No one listened until it was too late. Nancy Kyes as Annie, PJ Souls as Linda, Charles Cyphers as Brackett, Kylie Richards as Lindsay, Brian Andrews as Tommy. I mean, Nancy Stevens as Marion Chambers. Everybody in this film, even Arthur Mallet, who plays the Graveyard Keeper, everybody does a fantastic job. The dialogue is really well written. I actually wanted meant to do a totally counter uh, for every time they say the word totally in this movie, but I did not get to that. So next year, or when I actually do a commentary or a watch party, we're going to do a counter to see how many times they say the word totally. But it fits with the time period this film was shot, and it fits the dialogue with the teenage girls uh, in the movie. Nick Castle, as the shape in this movie, is absolutely terrifying. The way he stalks people, the way he just kind of is out of sight from everybody when he's watching them, everything works really well. Going forward after this, everyone watched his performance to see how to do it right. And if they didn't, they didn't do a good job with their research because he did everything perfect. His movements, everything about the shape in this works so well. Absolutely brilliant. The mask, it's just a Captain Kirk mask from the 1970s. Rick Rosenthal got it, cut the eyes out of it. Spray painted it white, spray painted the hair, ripped off the sideburns, and the way they use the lighting effects and the shadowing in this movie makes the mask work so well. Such a blank face. It's terrifying. It's uneasy. And it j everything about it is just perfect. That's the thing about this movie. It's one of those things where you call lightning in a bottle. Everything comes together and works perfectly. And how successful it was as an independent film. It made so much money. It had a budget of $300,000 and it made millions of dollars. And it is still one of the most successful independent films of all time. John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's screenplay for this is what makes it work. And John Carpenter's directing. Biggest thing about this movie that makes it as good as it is, is John Carpenter's score. Without his score, it doesn't work as well. Uh, you watch it without that, it's not as good. You put that music in, he times everything just right with the keys and the notes. It's just perfect. It literally is like a puzzle. You put it all together and you've got a few pieces missing in the corner. You put them all together, it's perfect masterpiece. It's, it's done. And the music is what keeps it all together. It's that glue that holds this movie together. Without it, it doesn't work. To me, it's one of the best pieces of music ever written for film. It's very subtle, yet very haunting. And it really plays with your emotions as the scenes go on throughout the movie. And it sets up everything re really, really well. The pacing of the movie is perfect. Uh, there's no point where it slows down to the point where you're like, okay, let's get to something. There's always something going on that you're intrigued. You're on the edge of your seat. You're waiting for something to happen. Is Michael going to kill this person now? Is he still talking? He takes his time. And that's what makes it so terrifying is that it, it's just, it keeps going and you're like, oh my God, when is he going to kill them? And he finally does. And then that final end scene where Lori goes over to the house looking for Annie, looking for uh, Bob, looking for Linda, and she can't find anybody. Then she discovers the bodies. Then she discovers Michael and the chase scene from that house over to the Doyle house. And up until the end is just one of the best chase sequences and stalk sequences in horror cinema history. I'm sure I could go on for hours about this movie. I could probably talk about it and just keep going and keep going. But I want to cut the review a little bit shorter because if you haven't seen this movie, if you're a fan of horror and you've heard people talk about it but you've never watched it, I recommend you go watch it immediately, especially during this time of year. I saw this movie for the first time when I was younger. I was probably about 13 or 14. I rewatched it again when I was in my late teens, early 20s. And at that point, 
up until this day, I've watched it every Halloween, every year, since I was in my 20s. So I've been watching this for 20 plus years, every Halloween. Like during our Halloween party tomorrow, I will probably be playing this in the background as we're all hanging out and having a good time. This movie is perfect, in my opinion, one of the best movies ever made, the best horror film ever made. I love it, and I can't say enough good things about it. Go watch it. It's a great film. John Carpenter's Halloween is a masterpiece, in my opinion. Definitely go check it out. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. That will do it for my review of John Carpenter's Halloween. Hope you guys have enjoyed the 31 Days of Halloween. What do you guys think about this movie? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about it. I always love hearing from you guys. Leave a like on the video. It really does help us out. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on everything we do here on the Geek Blend. Links in the description for our social media, our Discord, and all the ways you guys can support the channel. Anything you guys can do to help us out, we would really appreciate that. And I want to say thank you to all of my current channel supporters, whether you do Patreon, Subscribestar, or you're a member. I really appreciate all you guys do for the channel. You guys mean a lot. All your names will be scrolling below me, as well as in the outro, as always. Uh, so thank you all for what you do for the channel. That will do it for this video. 31 Days of Halloween is almost over. Thank you guys for making what it was a success. I'm Jeff, this is The Geek Blend, and remember, if you geek about it, we speak about it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Happy Halloween.